Assalamualaikum and greetings. Hello everyone. Welcome to Massive Open Online Course for Building Surveying Practice 2, ESR 255. I hope from now, you will enjoy to learn about Building Surveying Practice 2. Okay, this is the first module that you will learn. The first is 1.0, Investigations of Building Elements Defects and Method of Condition Building Assessment. Okay, we will focus on topic 1.01, Procedures and Methods of Building Inspections and presented by me, Suryani Na Abdulwahab. Okay, before we start, let me ask you, what skill does a building surveyor need? Okay, actually, building surveyor needs a skill which is a technical knowledge and competence, a logical and practical mind, and the ability to analyze problems in order to identify solutions, especially for the buildings. Okay, topic learning outcomes. So, we hope that at the end of the class, the student will be able to identify the procedures used for building inspections. And we hope that at the end of the class, the students are able to understand the methods of building inspection. Before we start, let's look to the topic content outlines. Okay, the first, we will look into the what skill does a building survey needs. 2A, topic learning outcomes. 2B, topic content outlines. Number 3, why it is important to know procedures and method of building inspections. For A, the importance of procedures. For B, inspection procedure. For C, the purpose of condition survey. For D, condition survey procedures. 5, resources available. 6, self-assessment quiz. 7, self-assessment feedback. 8, assessment performance. 9, let's recap. Why it is important to know building procedures and methods of building inspections. This is because to make conscious survey successful and the procedure is the most important element to determine and understand by building surveyor. What is the importance of the procedure? So there are four importance of the procedures. The first is capable to understand the whole process of the workflow. Number two is standard guideline for building surveyor to do conscious survey works. And number three, easier to prepare planning and scheduling Condition survey works and number four to determine the level of building conditions okay next we move to inspection procedures the procedures for a domestic house that being produced by peter glover are the first is a preliminary inspections of the whole property to familiarize the surveyor with type and the layouts of the house then, a detailed inspections of the main roof space and any subsidiary roof voids which are accessible. And then, a room by a room inspections at each floor level starting from the topmost floor. Then, we need to inspect of accessible basement, cellars and subfloor areas. And examinations of the roof structures and coverings from the ground level using the binoculars if necessary and from ladders or through roof voids where accessible and examinations of the elevations including structure and finishes then we need to inspect of the site boundaries outbuildings and surroundings the last one we need to examination and testing of the drains let me explain about the inspection procedures the first is a preliminary inspections of the whole property the building surveyor need to familiarize the surveyor with the types and the layout. They need to take notes, general characteristics and descriptions of the property. We need to identify overall length of terrace should be started. Sometimes required to take elevations of the whole terrace, not just the particular subject property. Notes general like of the land and the gradient on which the building stands. If the gradient abnormal look on possibility of ground movement or land slip need on structural check on the foundation design. If the house on sloping sites suffer more problem than build a level site, surveyor should look on post structural movement. It is important to know the age of the building and then identify the types of the roof. Pitch of the flat roof covering, brickworks, timber use, finishes can be determined according to the period during which the building was erected. 
Number two is a detailed inspection of the main roof space and any subsidiary roof voids which are accessible. Here, the building surveyor need to describe the types of the roof covering and conditions. Three is the room by room inspections. Here, building surveyor need to prepare a sketch plan for each floor level, marking all openings and the locations of the power and lighting points and the lights. Take dimension in each floor and make notes on the conditions of the ceiling, walls and the floors. Test the doors and windows by opening and closing. Describe fixtures, fittings, fixed appliances, electrical points and other matters of interest. Okay, number four is inspections of accessible basement and subfloor area. Okay, here, this building surveyor need to conduct a close study on damp-proof courses, ground floor timbers and main wall constructions. For the wall, we need to know the types of the construction material used, the type of the finishes and its conditions. Do it need a repair? Are there any signs of the crack? What types of the crack? How serious of the crack? What is the size and the depth? Next, we need to know the conditions of the windows and the doors and what is the conditions of the floors. Number five is an examination of the roof structures and coverings from ground level. We need to use a binoculars if necessary and from ladders or through roof voids where accessible. Here, paying attention to slip, crack or laminated tile and other signs of deterioration. The conditions of hip and ridge tile is checked, especially to the bedding mortar. For the roof, we need to look into the roof type and appearance. Is there a need to include sketch or photograph to explain the roof layout? How it constructed? Take note of the roof covering material and its appearance. Note the uneven surface if you can see. Is the slope correct for the material use? Are there adequate cover flashings? How it is fixed? Are there any openings through the roof surface? How it is sealed? Can water penetrate? Conditions of flat roof surface, its slopes and drainage system. Any signs of water pooling? Okay, here is what we need to check. Okay, number six is an examination of the elevations, including structure and finishes. Sketch all fracture lines, showing starting and finishing points and width at various points. Look for any marks or stains on the wall caused by the leaking, overflow gutter and downpipes. We can see what happened to rainwater disposal and also the if detail. Number seven is inspections of the site boundaries, outbuildings and surroundings. Here we need to study the general conditions of the boundaries and any outbuildings. For example, is there any storage and garage? Ask client if he want to check on fences, gates, garden sheds, greenhouse, and etc. If not, concentrate on building and its structure. However, permanent outbuildings, extensive masonry boundary walls can form a significant expenditure potential and should be included in a survey. Check for any indications of possible neighboring, future developments, or redevelopment including road schemes. For example, highways or private roads. Any works can place a betterment or severance to client should be noted and will appreciate by client. And the last one, number 8, is examination and testing of the drains. The testing of drain is difficult to undertake. Many surveyors provide supplementary drain test report with the reason. No manhole access to the system and drain could be in such poor conditions. We are afraid any testing could only cause damage. So, if we want to check, lifting all accessible manhole covers to check the drain flow and inspect between manholes using mirror. Give initial commands in the report, giving the client an opportunity to commission a supplementary drain test report if needed. If pipes are cracked, fall poor, drain flow sluggish can be command and give suitable advice. Manhole covers frequently damage. All the cast iron covers will rusted and difficult to remove. Check on brickwork and rendering inside manhole walls might indicate either than not recent so patch has occurred. Foresee the purpose of condition survey. What is the purpose of condition survey? 
The purpose of condition survey is to give an independent professional opinions on the conditions of the properties. Professional opinions are on the structural of the building such as foundations, column, beam, floor, wall, roof and etc. Then comment on seating, environments and planning of the property. We need to report on finishes, services and some major fixtures in fitting. Give observations and recommendations on maintenance costs, both immediate and future. Then, provide considerable amounts of important data on performance of building components elements as a data bank. For the condition survey procedures, so here is the condition survey procedures. We start with the confirmations on client instructions. Preliminary surveys and procedures, preparing equipments for inspections, here the inspection sequence of the survey operations and recording site notes based on the checklist. And the last one, we need to preparing report and submissions to the client. 5. Resources available. Let's refer to the resources available. There are building inspection process. And number 2 is what inspected during a building inspection. Please click the link to know further. 6. Self-assessment quiz. Okay, did you understand the explanation just now? Let's check. Please try this self-assessment quiz. 7. Is a feedback. How's your scores? 8. It assess performance. Okay, please click the link below to answer the quiz. Okay, well done. You already finished learning for this topic. Let's recap for this topic. You learned about the building procedures and method of building inspections. Okay, bye. Thank you.